Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at some quadcopters that basically fly themselves and don't really require much skills and I'm going to give them a handicap, specifically these two because these two rely on GPS. So we have got the Tallow here and this is at an advantage already because it does not have GPS. Instead it uses infrared and an optical flow camera to keep it stable and at the making of this video it costs 102 GBP. Now I'm not going to go through all of the different currencies on what that is. In fact, depending on what country you live in, the price can change. So I will link to all of these in the below and you can see what the price of them is in your country. Or you can use Google to translate the currency difference. Now the Tallow that I have here is the version that flies just from the mobile device so you can actually buy it with a Bluetooth controller and that costs 107 GBP so not actually a lot more and recently I've been complaining about tiny whoops not having removable ducts and you have to unscrew motors and things but the Tallow actually does have clip on and clip off removable ducts and it's something that I missed in my review of this thing and I really like that but the Tallow is at a disadvantage because unlike these two it does not have a three axis gimbal its image is 720p 30 frames per second and 9 megabit and it doesn't have an SD card either so the recorded footage is sent to your phone so if your phone stutters then the video that is recorded stutters so there is some disadvantages to that but when I flew this guy indoors I was absolutely amazed at how it just sat there so I think it'd be interesting to compare that to these two. So next we have got the Fimi X8 SE and at the making of this video it costs 383 GBP and it relies on GPS for its stability but we also have got a ultrasonic sensor for its height and an optical flow for its stability. By the way, they have released the price of a spare battery for the Fimi X8 SE and I was surprised to see that it's pretty expensive at around about 68 GBP. However, it is an intelligent battery so it does discharge itself but it's not a smart battery like the Mavic in that you can choose the day in which it discharges itself. And it's also important to note that it's 85 GBP for a Mavic Pro battery so it's still cheaper and we know that the Fimi flies for longer than the Mavic Pro it's just not in keeping with the price comparison I don't think when it comes to the actual copters because the price between this one and this one is quite considerable but the price between batteries is not and then we have got the Mavic Pro first edition so there's now the Mavic 2 but I think it is relevant because there are a lot of people selling these second hand now by the way this video is going to be in 4k so if your device allows it then go in the bottom corner and select 4k because these two are both capable of filming in 4k and of course I'm going to be recording them in 4K. Now the Mavic in my country costs 624 GBP second hand and if I wanted to buy a new one I'd be looking at around about 
£844, and that is for the non fly more combo so you know it's still a considerable difference compared to this guy however we do have object avoidance on this one and we've got two ultrasonic sensors and two optical flow sensors so i think it's going to be interesting giving these the handicap by taking the GPS away. And how am I going to do that? Well, it's pretty easy. I just need to find a big indoor space and that's going to block the GPS signal. So let's get and do that. Okay, let's start off with something simple like the tallow. Of course, not DJI, but more so DJI inside, no GPS just has infrared sensors underneath and I think it does have a little camera there's certainly a pinhole something there but of course no micro SD card but as you can see the thing is absolutely locked and I had it doing this in the house and I couldn't believe it no GPS, hands off. Of course it's hands off because it just uses the phone to fly. But I'm standing in one place and it is not moving. Really quite incredible. Of course it doesn't have a gimbal like the expensive drones out there. But if you've got a space like this, then it's fantastic. And it can be trusted as well. Let's give it a bit of height and see if that affects its position hold. doesn't seem to bring it down just a little bit so it makes me wonder if the Femi X8 SE is going to be able to do that in here because it couldn't do it outside that is for sure but this thing it's more capable than people give it credit for, I think. So, what I also thought was interesting is if you put your hand underneath it, it raises up. Bring it back down. Hand underneath, raises up. Okay. Another thing I like about this thing is the palm landing. So if I go onto the phone. So I don't have the Bluetooth adapter, but do the hand landing. It asks me to confirm. I put my hand out. Lands on my hand. Pretty incredible and well worth the money, I think. Okay, so here we have the Femi. I've got zero GPS and it's telling me to be careful flying indoors. And I just want to see what its position hold is like without any wind and zero GPS. You can see it making slight adjustments. But there's no doubt that it's staying in the same place. Let's see what the footage is like. Honestly, I expected it to fly off with how it performed outside. 
I think it's its height that it moves around the most. But it's very slight. It'll be interesting to see what the difference is between this and the Mavic. I thought it'd be really loud in here, but it's not too bad. Yeah, you can see. It's lifting up on its own, and that's not anything to do with my hand. Let's fly it around a little bit. Trying to be careful. But it does seem to be paving itself. And the footage is looking nice. I have updated the firmware, by the way. And I know a lot of you guys want me to do another video with the updated firmware. So, is it still getting the vertical speed and horizontal speed wrong? Horizontal speed, no, they've corrected that by the looks of it. So that's good. That's fully forward, but I'm not in sport mode. But yeah, indoors, no GPS. In fact, zero GPS. I don't think I've even seen that in the house. It is keeping its position absolutely perfectly. Let's see what happens higher up. I think it is moving around a little bit more higher up. Because it's got that camera taking pictures, you see. But it's still keeping its position. Do we dare to take it through the hole? I probably shouldn't. It looks very close to the light. I need to be careful. But it did it, it went through. <laughs> Apparently they've improved the precision landing of this thing as well. So it looks like I'm going to have to strain my neck again and do a second video. But I have to say, pretty impressed with that. Didn't think it would fare as well. So now I just need to get the thumbnail. <laughs> Hands off. Yeah, just light movement. Nothing that will affect what you see on the camera. The Mavic might be rock solid to look at but they are both rock solid through the camera. So, let's bring it in for a landing. Okay, so finally the Mavic, gonna do a manual takeoff again. What does it say GPS wise? I can't see. 
foot. We're in the same situation as the SE. And just as I suspected, it is not moving anywhere. It is absolutely locked. Actually, it's drifting a little bit there. Obstacle avoidance, uh, uh, that could be why. You step back away from it a bit. Yeah, there we go. It's almost like it's suspended, isn't it? Pretty amazing. Yeah, I don't think it's got any GPS satellites either. Of course, we have more sensors underneath this guy. We've got two ultrasonics, two cameras, but actually indoors. It's performing very similar to the Femi XA SE. I can see that gimbal knocking around. That was a complaint that I had of the Mavic is that I think the gimbal is fragile, the thing is buzzing at me because, yeah, look at that, full forward, won't let me go any closer to myself because of object avoidance. Let's fly this guy around and just see what it is like. I guess we can compare the camera footage to some extent. We can check out the low light capabilities. But if flying indoors with these things is your thing, they both do it. And they both do it pretty well. Let's get some height on and see what happens. What's it saying there? I got some sort of error that came up there. Seven meters. I think it's max altitude approach. Ah, so that's interesting. So when there's no GPS, we've got a max altitude on the Mavic. So it won't let me go any higher with it or will it let me go higher it's just that it's going to warn me that the accuracy isn't going to be as good no no that is full up on the throttle and it will not let me go any higher so that's interesting isn't it but well, maybe quite a good safety feature I don't know. What do you guys think? Go straight up and it stops. I was hoping to see if I could get it through the hoop here, but nope. It's probably going to crash straight into it if I did that. Actually, it wouldn't technically, hopefully, because of object avoidance. No, it's not even it's not even high enough to do so. Well, there you go. That is the Talo, the Femi X8 SE and the Mavic Pro first edition all flying indoors. Pretty impressed with all of them, I have to say. But anyways, Let's bring it in for a landing. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers. There you go, Let's Run Out fans. Completely authentic now. Let's Run Out sticker.